everybody. I'm Rat Soap. Hey, my name's Miss Mia. I'm from Chicago. My name's Rat Tina. Hey, everybody. This is Bratso, Ratso's cousin. I'm Lil Ratso from Chicago. -go. And we're celebrating our 10th anniversary here. Can you believe it's been 10 years? We're very excited this year to give out Chicago -go Heritage Awards to some beautiful musicians who have made our lives so much richer here in Chicago. We're going to give it to somebody different every week this year. So keep watching. It's going to be great. Are you excited? I am. Oh my goodness. Let's go. A-R-T spells art. We're here at the Hyde Park Art Center. I know a lot of you kids might have taken classes here and it's a great place to make art, but it's also a great place to see art. And we're gonna go check out an amazing exhibit about an amazing Chicagoan. Let's go! The exhibit that's up now is really exciting because as you know, it's our 10th anniversary and we're giving a Heritage Award every week to an important Chicago icon. And this show here is about an icon, isn't that right? It sure is. It's about uh, the icon Sun Ra, who was uh, an important musician and band leader here in Chicago from 1946 to 1961. Well, before we find out who he is, who are you? Uh, I'm John Corbett, and I was one of the curators of this exhibition. Well, tell us about Sun Ra. Now, you said he was uh, here for a while, right? He was here for a while in the 1940s and 50s and left in 1961, yeah. Now, what kind of music did Sun Ra make? Sun Ra made jazz, but he was also interested in uh, experimental music. And he did a lot of things with homemade instruments and uh, all sorts of things. Well, what, what's experimental music? Experimental music is the kind of music that you make by asking questions using sound. Wow, that's really a good explanation. And what kind of homemade instruments did he have? Well, some of his band uh, made harps, and sometimes they made uh, uh, little homemade electronic instruments. Uh, they were really interested, he was really interested in electronic music, so music that you make with... Uh, so electronics in the 40s, that's crazy! Yeah, he, he had a little instrument called a solo vox in the 1940s, which was a actually mass-produced little instrument that you would clip onto the bottom of your keyboard. So you would be playing piano, which was his instrument, and then underneath it there would be a little uh, instrument, electronic instrument, that would uh, you could play as well. That's incredible. Now, what's this exhibit called? This exhibit's called Pathways to Unknown Worlds. So, was he into other planets? You know, Sun Ra was born on Earth, but he was inhabited by a being from Saturn when he was a little kid. Holy goodness! So that was when he was in Chicago? He met uh, somebody from Saturn? He actually, uh, when he was in Birmingham, Alabama, when oh. he was a little kid, he was, he always felt like he was inhabited by a being from another planet, and he was, it, it was identified as a uh, being from Saturn. And did that Saturnian stay with him all through his life? For the rest of his life. Well, tell us what's in the exhibit. This exhibition has uh, all sorts of materials from Sun Ra's period when he was here in Chicago, most of it starting in the mid-1950s, going up until about 1961. And then there's another exhibition that's part of the same uh, uh, kind of group of uh, 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 exhibitions that uh, examines the continuing influence of Sun Ra on contemporary artists and musicians. Wow! Well, that's cool because a lot of kids like to make art, and it's nice that Sun Ra is inspiring people to still make art. But first, let's look at the stuff up here. Show us some cool stuff, okay? Let's do that. Sounds great. Uh, who is you? I'm everything and nothing. These are two pieces that were um, actually made by Sun Ra in the 1960s, and they were designs for record covers. So these were um, when records were still uh, kind of flat, black, uh, 
things that you would play on a record player rather than CDs or MP3s or anything like that. You needed to make something to design as a design for the outside of the cover and Sun Ra made these fantastic uh, um, pencil, color pencil drawings. Uh, and then they were translated into, um, into record covers. First they were made into these um, ink, draw, ink drawings. They were sort of translated onto um, a, a record cover sized piece of cardboard and then that was used to produce these beautiful blocks. These blocks are part of what were used to, in the basement of the record producer um, to actually print the record covers themselves. And then the printed version is back over here. And that's what it looked like when it was all finished. So Wow! We just saw everything. We saw his drawing. We saw the copies of his drawing. We saw the plates, and I noticed that the letters are backwards. How come? Well, when you print using a, a, a print block or a plate, it always goes backwards because uh, it's and then like you, a mirror. Then you put ink on that, and you put it on paper, and it, it's the right way. And then it looks like that. That's awesome. Was it a good record? It's a great record. It's a very noisy, wild, crazy record. Oh, kids love noisy, wild craziness. All right, let's see something else. Hey, what's this little book here? This little book is um, something that the record producer, the guy who was um, Sun Ra's business manager, had. And uh, Sun Ra and his business, business manager had a record label called Saturn Records. And they were very excited about what that record label might do, that they might get very famous and very uh, have a lot of opportunities. So they, uh, this is a sketch that he made for the high rise that they might someday have the um, Saturn Records Cosmic Research Center where they Whoa. could study space and they could study, you see, space communication and the Department of Sound and uh, the L. Saturn Wisdom Research Culture Art Foundation. He was like an architect. He was... Uh, and it was like he was making a secret clubhouse. Exactly. Like the Sun Ra Bat Cave. That's awesome. Hey, what's this? Well, this is a symbol. This is a, a, a metallic object that a drummer might hit. Oh, you clang on it. It makes a lot of noise. That's awesome. Exactly. And, well, Sun Ra was really interested in words, and he was interested in the fact that symbol sounded like a symbol, like a, a sign or, you know, something that is a certain shape. And like this you. star here. Exactly. And so there are symbols on this symbol. So there's a, a symbol here. And then if you look down here, he was also really interested in numbers, and he was interested in the possible magic properties of numbers. And so oh, this is a man. whole numerical table. These are all numbers in special order. Whoa! And look at that, and there's all kinds of symbols on this symbol. Yeah. What, is that a homonym? Symbols on a symbol. It's true. It's a, a homonym. homonym. Kids, that's a word that's spelled different and sounds the same and means something different. Like pair and pair. And pair. Where am I? These are uh, actually photographs of rooms. You can see these are all paintings that are made on the walls of rooms, and they're inside somebody's house, and they're actually black light paintings. So they're paintings that when you turn the lights out, if you have a special kind of light and you shine it on them, they'll glow in the dark. Whoa, glow in the dark, that's awesome. And they were really interested in that. You can see all sorts of, all sorts of great planets and stars and uh, sometimes ships, uh, spaceships here. Those are the littlest pictures I've ever seen in a museum. They're very small. It's true. Well, these were made by a guy named I. He just had one name, A-Y-E, I. I. And this is actually a piece that he painted. This, if you turned a, a black light on this, it would actually glow in the dark. Holy goodness. Look at that. It's got a crazy... 
I, because his name was I, that's another sort of a homonym, kind of a proper noun homonym. Then it's got this fiery sun and the planets. That's, what a handsome gentleman. He sure is. That's from just after he moved to New York City, which was in the early 1960s. Cool. Let's check out a couple more things. Great. Hey, what are these pictures here? Well, these are by a guy named Claude Dangerfield. Whoa, Claude Dangerfield. Great name. He has such a great name, but we don't know much about Claude Dangerfield. What we know is that he made some record cover designs for records for Sun Ra in the 1950s and 60s. And Did they make these of, records? No, these were never made. These were just designed. Claude Dangerfield's designs were used on some of the later records. But I really love the, um, I love the space in these, especially this one, which is a spaceship. Oh, yeah. Purple sky and a spaceship heading out into the unknown. And look at these future houses. This guy should have helped him design his uh, building. It's true, yeah. And whoa! And there's Sun. There's the Sun, and his name Speaking is Sun Speaking of Afrofuturism, let's go to Brooklyn and check out one of my Sun favorite Ra. futuristic films. Well, his mom actually named him uh, something else. Uh, well, yeah, what was his name? Herman Poole Blunt was his original name. That's Herman. a pretty cool name already. Yeah, Herman. Herman Poole Blunt. But he didn't like that name very much, so he changed his name to uh, Lasonia Ra. And then he shortened it to just Sun Ra, and some of his friends called him Sonny. Well, so it's okay to change your name, I guess. I mean, it sure is. Legally, you can do that, too. Hey, let's go downstairs and look at some of the art that he inspired. That sounds great. All right. Exhibit down here is a lot of artists who dug Sun Ra. Can you tell us about him? Yeah, these are all people who are contemporary artists or artists since the 1960s um, who were influenced by Sun Ra, all people who liked his work and who found him inspiring and decided that they would uh, uh, make work somehow related to him or inspired by him. So, awesome. Well, show us this piece. These are one that's right here. They're kind of cool. These are great. These are by a, a collective, a group of people working together under the name Destroy All Monsters. Well, what city are they from? Uh, they're from Detroit originally, but uh, most of them live in California. Actually, one of them, who's one of the most famous artists in the world right now, named Mark, Mike Kelly, he lives in California. But uh, these were these are sort of very Detroit-oriented. And Sun Ra had a little connection to Detroit from when he was uh, um, in the Midwest. Uh, he did. He lived in Ann Arbor for a little while and, and did a lot of collaborations with different groups in, in Detroit and Ann Arbor, which is well, a city Well, show us some of the cool people in this one. Well, let's see. We can uh, mention, uh, this is uh, uh, Iggy and the Stooges. Oh, yeah. We danced to them on the show. Absolutely. Uh, we also have, uh, this is a guy named George Clinton, and George Clinton had a group called Funkadelic and Parliament Funkadelic. Yeah, yeah, we danced to them on the show. Well, now he was, in a way, influenced by Sun Ra. You can see he's getting out of a spaceship here. Yeah. And uh, that's Sun Ra right There's there. Sun Ra. Uh, Sun Ra's got a very special uh, extraterrestrial hat on. Oh, man, that's awesome. Yeah. Hey, how did they make these? Did they draw all these pictures? Now, this is a collage. So collage. these are yeah, different pictures put together. And uh, this was actually a study or a sketch for a really, really huge banner. This was uh, many, many feet wide. It was giant. Hey, look, it's our friend Plastic Crane Wave. Who did he draw right here? Well, that's a drawing of Sun Ra, actually. Man, that sure is a good drawing. Yeah, beautiful. And that's I... that's a drawing from of Sun Ra from the 1960s, actually, about 1965. And where did he live? Right then, he was living in, in New York. He just moved there from Chicago. He sure liked being in Chicago, I bet, because this is a very inspiring city, and it looks like Plastic Crown Wave was inspired to do some pretty good stuff. 
Yeah. Hey, one of our other good friends is in the show, right? That's true. Let's go look at his stuff. Whoa, there's Pedro's awesome, awesome picture. Can you tell us about this? What do you see in it? Well, I see all sorts of things. You see Sun Ra was really interested in, um, in Egypt. So you can see things like the scarab beetles here, which were um, uh, important symbols. So Sun Ra was into the beetles? He was interested in the beetles as all long right. as they were uh, uh, as long as they were Egyptian beetles. Oh yeah. And uh, Look at that kisser on Sun Ra. He looks serious. Yeah. He liked mystery. He liked being mysterious. And this is actually uh, um, he had an instrument, a homemade instrument called the Sun Harp, and that's sort of a uh, an abstracted version of the Sun Harp right there. Well, that's awesome. Well. Thank you so much for taking us around this exhibit. It's really cool. I think what we're going to do to finish it off is to go watch one of the great moments from Chicago -Go history when Pedro Bell came on and sung a song. And it's pretty spacey, so maybe it was inspired by Sun Ra. Space is a place. Space is a place. Thanks a lot, John. Thanks, Lil Ratso. Now, I usually don't get to do interviews or talk about the artists, but this is one of my all-time favorites. One of the greatest drawers that there ever was, the king of markers, Pedro Bell. Yay! 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 <laughs> Welcome to Chicago. You're our most colorful guest ever. Look at that outfit. That's some getup. Where do you buy your clothes? Um, anywhere where the trash bins are, uh, waste management. One of my hey. biggest contributors. I like to get stuff out of dumpsters, too. Right. I think I've seen you picking around my house a few times. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, you know, rat, rat, so, you know, me uh, and you uh, like to hang out at the same places. Uh, Bob Bacteria and Priscilla Protozoa. We were uh, tight buddies. Rats of a feather, I guess. Hey, tell us how you first met Funkadelic. You're very famous for doing art for them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, first did a thing in Amanda Hall University of Chicago in uh, 19 something. Uh, Funk Duck was playing there for the first time in Chicago, 1972. And that's where I went ahead and checked them out for the first time. In a line. And how'd you show them that your art? I was doing envelopes for them. Once upon a time, before I actually made the hookup with them, I had this thing about decorating envelopes. And um, I intro myself to them with that. So they was cool as far as doing artwork after that point. Now you uh, have all kinds of crazy space images on your stuff. This is our futuristic show. How did you invent your space language and come up with all those crazy ideas? It was a way I was brought up. Uh, just an operational crazoid from day one. Thank you very much. Thank well, you did a special song just for me, didn't you? Oh, yes. I was hoping that you wouldn't mention that, but since I'm here, I'll do it. Okay, well, I heard you're a little embarrassed and you want to change outfits, so we're going to take a little break. When we come back, me and Pedro are going to hear Pedro's salute to me. Mark, ten, nine, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, boom. Walk in here, man. Walk in here. Don't ask me why. Walk in here. I can't stand eating. No walk in here. Walk in here. Walk in here. I just like chump in on hogs, heads, cheese. And wearing shorts because I got cute knees. This is Rat Sal. And here are best chums. We're in a band. And he plays the drums. They call me Honky Head. They call me Honky Head. Honky Head. We'll, we'll show up at our Yeah, we thanks for joining us, Pedro. Let's dance on out of here, everybody, with the title track from a record that your masterpieces was the cover for. 
This is Hardcore Jollies. I'm in an industrial part of Brooklyn. This is called Red Hook. And look at all these crazy machines. These Speaking of Afro futurism, let's go to Brooklyn and check out one to of print my favorite t-shirts. And we're going to learn a little bit about how you can do crazy printing from one of our friends. Let's go meet him. One of the best things about Brooklyn is there's so many creative people doing so many cool things. Like, this is my friend Jason here. Hey Jason, what you doing? I'm uh, getting some newspaper so I can put this down and not make a mess. What kind of mess are you making? I'm doing some silk screening. Silk screening, that's cool. What is silk screening? It's a stencil process that um, will print anything you want. T-shirts, CD covers, DVD covers. Cool. So you like printing? Do you do the artwork yourself? A lot of times. Is it fun to draw? I can't, I can't get enough of it. Okay, well, I'm really excited to see exactly what you're doing. Wow. It's one color so far. That says Chicago. I wonder what else that's going to say. You might, you might recognize someone on there in a minute. Okay, cool. So show us what you're doing. It's taking a piece of paper. And I've got placing it within the marks. Yeah, he's got little marks of some sort. It's just a little bit of tape. Then I flood the And what's screen. that? This is a squeegee and this is a silk screen ink. So you just put ink all over that paper? It's the only well, it's way. Well, it's going to be all white. Just it's not it's all white. There's a stencil on here that only allows ink to go through where we want it to. I see. Wow. That's really cool. How'd you learn how to do this? Um, school. So it's important to go to school, I guess. It's important to go to school. So is it fun to live in Brooklyn? Yeah, I like it. I can't imagine living anywhere else. Are there a lot of artists in Brooklyn? Too many. <laughs> Why do you think they come here? Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's just a nice place to be. Well, that's awesome. What are some other kinds of artists that live here? In this building, Is everybody silk screening? Is this just a city of millions of silk screeners? There are a few. But uh, in this building, there are people who do um, photography and uh, set design. A lot of different types of artists. Wow. And what do you like to do in Brooklyn when you're not making silk screens? Um, I try and get a try and get a, um, a few friends together and play in a band. Well, I'm gonna watch you do this. So what are you putting on? More toothpaste? More ink. Ink, okay. It's about the consistency of toothpaste. And how'd you make that screen? I um did some drawings and scanned them into my computer, and then printed out a stencil of exactly what you see on the screen. How'd you print the stencil? There is a, um, just a standard uh, computer printer. It prints it onto um, a clear sheet of plastic. And then I've got the screen coated with a photosensitive emulsion. Emulsion? It's kind of like the consistency of ink. It's just a... Um... Oh yeah, yeah. I, I emulse all the time. <laughs> And uh, once that's dry, I can um, expose the screen and it will burn this image into the screen so that I can print it. 
Wow, and then you do this crazy anky stuff. Again and again. Well, when you're done with those inks, can I come back and see you do the other color? This sounds like a good idea. Okay, I'll be back in a minute. You kids go get a snack, and we'll all come back in about five, four, three, two, and one. Hey, what are we doing now in this crazy dark room? Cleaning everything off. I'm washing all the ink off the screen we were just printing. Okay, let's see. Hey, what do you call this dark room? It's a dark room. Oh. Right over here is where we expose the screens. Well, that's too dark to see. I'll turn the light on. Hey, look at that. Man, you got a lot of cool stuff here, Jason. We try. All right. And we're going to do another screen now, aren't we? Yep, as soon as I wash this out, we'll start printing the next one. All right. Okay, Jason, so now we're back and you're going to do the black ink. That's what we're doing. I like that squeak. <laughs> Sounds familiar. Rats so what'd you print? I printed your brother. Show me. Wow, there he is. You are awesome. Thanks, man. So do you have any advice for the kids who might want to get into screen printing or do art or move to Brooklyn or grow their hair long or anything? Um, get mutton chops? Mutton chops are always good. Got to go to school to get mutton chops. Okay, so go to school. Any other stuff about art? Um, ask as many questions as you can. That's good advice. All that art is probably making kids antsy to dance. Who's a really great... Brooklyn musician we could dance to. The ODB. ODB on Chicken Go Go. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. That one's way off. Let me see. Song. One of our modern artists has recently passed on. So this is our song with ODB and Master Killer singing about the old man. R.I.P. OBD. ODB. <laughs> Special sauce, onions, tomatoes, lettuce on the sesame seed bun. On the sesame seed bun, the big dummy. Dang, 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 dang. Make the crowd say, oh, people, if you're ready to ride, then let's go. The older the wine, the more vintage each sentence. Mature like stock dropped on beat. Soul in its highest peak, the Black Panther. Calling for the answer, the shadow dancer. No cure for the cancer. Carefully approach this near the approach. Tension in the street, we stress them want to eat. Supply, meet the demand for those who get high. Sly in the family. Carve my name in stone, peace to Angie. Own and own, cheap day strong. 44 long, stay today's bath and watch your name on. The abbot had his head reflecting off the chrome. Bank loan for a mill. Oprah, hold me down like Dr. Phil. This is Nap, Sap, Rap. Point, joint, gas. My gas point at you, now you can't point back. Penetrating skulls. I'm digging holes like a mole. I swore when I dole. My daily toils to protect the earth so the seas won't spoil. Your friggin' stock tight, mine like Peter Boyle. Hooked on that power, you money, we power too. Power move, guard you, fine booze. Lines of snooze. Clouds of smoke, we smoke today, break. We keep the lease soaked in that PC. Y'all best to run when y'all see me. I'm like Godzilla stopping through Mount Fiji. On this way to Tokyo, you hollow block head tell lies like Pinocchio. Flip the Nokia phone, call my nigga TS. How you want the triple X rock cut? BS or princess? Or simply solid? The prince wrote is worth more than the wallet. Doggy, doggy, we'll steal your bone. 